So in this video, I'm going to talk through a practice frame that I recently played. So I made a nice break in this frame and I thought it would be excellent to make a video just talking about my thought process and some of the things that I'm thinking when I go about compiling these breaks. So I think as much as exercises and routines are very, very useful for improving your game, it's also very beneficial to have a go at these frames where you're playing against yourself so that you've got some more realistic scenarios when you're going about compiling breaks. Now I also think even if you're a bit of a beginner to the game, then some of the things we're going to talk about in this video will still be relevant and they'll still be very useful. So don't be put off by thinking that all of the information in this video is only for advanced players. Just one more reminder in this video as well that I'm also available for one-to-one -one coaching sessions. So I do sessions all the time, every week, where I'm working with players one-to-one -one on the table and improving their game. So if anyone's interested in that, then have a look at my website, www.bartonsnooker.co.uk. Right, so let's have a look at this video then. Right, so this first shot here, I've just got the natural angle for the white to cannon into these two reds here. So I'm just going to play this and just let the white bounce off those two reds and that'll hold me for the black. I actually caught that bottom red of the two a little bit thinner than I would have liked, so it's left me queuing over this other red. So all I can do is just pop this plain ball now and I should play a cannon into that red that I just showed on the screen there. So that cannon has actually left me on both of these reds and I've got one to the right corner and the one here. Now I'm going to play this one to the left corner here and I'm going to play into that area so that I can leave myself a little angle to pop the black and screw into the pack here. So because I've got this red here I can afford to pop the black, screw into the pack knowing that I'm probably going to land on that red to the right corner even if I don't land on one in the bunch. So, as we can see, I actually have landed on two reds here, the one that I originally thought, and this one to the left corner here. So I'm going to play this one to the left corner. A little bit easier to cue than the other one. So now I've actually decided here that these two reds are not potable at the moment, and I've got a little bit too much angle on this black than I would like. So I'm going to pop the black and play a little cannon into these two reds. So I'm going to pop the black, play a cannon into these two reds. So something like that, and that should hold the white on the red to the right corner again. So that little gentle cannon has just knocked those reds potable now, and I've still managed to stay in position on this red to the bottom right corner as well. So I've actually landed a little bit awkwardly on this red here. I'm going to have to get the swan extension out here so that I can queue over the over the other reds. So I'm just using the swan here so that I can reach and you'll see that I've just lifted the back of the swan neck up in the air there just to get the the head a little bit lower so that I could queue the middle of the white. So I couldn't do anything fancy with that shot just had to drop the red in and now because I've finished a fraction lower on the black than I would like I'm just going to play a cannon into these reds now to hold the white in the middle of the table. And I feel like I'd be unlucky here playing this cannon to not land on any reds at all. So I have potted that and I've landed on a couple of reds here. Landed on this one and I've also landed on this one to the left corner. But this other one here just offers me better position. I can just make sure I get that gap there so that I'm not hampering myself. I haven't got to queue over any reds there and I'm nicely on the black. Now, if I pop this black and bring the white into this area here, you can actually see that that's leaving me on five reds. So depending on whether I slightly under hit or over hit, I've got a big margin around this line to land in a good position for choice of reds there. So I've actually landed nicely here. On a couple of reds, I've got one to the bottom right corner, also this one directly in front of me to the left corner. I was just looking there whether I could play on the pink, but it's a nice little run through for the black here. I actually played to finish a little bit low on this black and I've just slightly under hit it. So what I'm going to have to do here is play to screw with reverse side back into the middle of the table. I can come in this area and even if I over hit and I go into this area, I'm still on choice of red. So I've got big margin of error here in terms of getting into good position. So potting this with bottom and right hand side, 
screwing back into that area of the table. I actually kissed into that red, but that's perfectly fine. I'm on choice of two reds here. In fact, three reds, sorry. I've got the two reds together and then the other red in the middle of the table. Uh, I'm just coming around to look at that other red now, but I wasn't quite on it as nicely as I would have liked. So I've chosen to play the bottom one of those two reds together. I'll just need my extension on my cue here. And I can just play to pop this red and just roll through and leave myself a little low angle on the black again. So just leaving that little low angle enables me to get nicely up for the next reds again. And what I chose here is if I just play that little gap there, again, I'm leaving myself on choice of reds. These two, I'll probably land on either one of those. So nicely into that area and I am on those two reds and actually as it happens I've also landed on this red here so I choose to play this one because this just also gets the pink into play then as well so this moves this red away from the pink so perfectly on the pink now and now I've just got a couple of nice little simple stuns and screws so little gentle stun shot here on the pink leaving myself on a red to the bottom left corner now. So a little gentle screw shot again. Just need to bring the white back a fraction for the pink here. So a little gentle screw, didn't need to come back far at all there. I've actually got slightly more angle than would be completely ideal. So I'm just gonna actually pop the pink and play a little cannon into that red now. Don't want to hit that red too hard because I don't want to knock that red to the cushion. So I'm just going to play a gentle cannon into that red and then that should leave me on choice of reds to the bottom right corner then as well and maybe even the red that I'm cannoning into. So potting the pink, playing that little gentle cannon. Not too hard because I didn't want to knock that red safe as we said. And now I'm nicely on this red to the bottom right hand corner here. If I can just leave the white in that area there, I'll be high on the black and then I can easily get to the next reds again. So a little stun shot over and I actually ended up stunning it and going down a little bit further than I would have liked. So I'm quite straight on the black now. And unlike the other black when I screwed on and off the cushion, the problem here is that it's difficult to put the white in an area that's nice and safe. So that red there, is the last really awkward red that's over towards the side cushion. So I actually choose to play the pink here and that gets me to that awkward red without having to do anything too fancy with the white there. I was just able to just drop that pink in and land on this red. So anywhere in this area now should leave me on the pink. Doesn't matter whether I finish high or low on the pink, I've got choice of multiple reds here, so I don't have to be too precise. So I've landed in that area. And in actual fact here, I landed absolutely dead straight on the pink, which was a little bit unfortunate there. So the only thing I could see here was to just drop the white forward into that little area that I've highlighted there, and then I'll have the red to the middle. I can obviously only pull the white backwards or forwards in a straight line here. And the red directly next to the pink doesn't pot. So just dropping the pink in, leaving myself in that little gap there so that I can play this red to the right middle. So I'm making sure I get top side of the blue here. Don't want to finish short because then that's going to make it very difficult to get to these last three reds. Now it looks as though I can come into this area here so I can just play lots of topspin on and off the side cushion. And then I was just double checking as I got down that that angle was there. So that's what I'm going to play into that nice big area. So lots of topspin. And I actually didn't get as much topspin on the shot as I would have liked there. And that's why the white didn't hit that second side cushion and back into open play, it just came off one cushion. But I'm nicely on this red here. So that was a nice safe area to bring the white into. So just stunning past the pink here for the opposite corner. And again, I've got a little succession of Little stun shots here, little stuns and screws. So another little gentle stun shot for the red into the right corner. And then again here, 
I can just roll this red through, make sure I leave myself high on the black so that I can get to the last red. So as I've talked about in other videos, always trying to think three shots ahead here. So leave myself a little bit short on the black here. Then that makes it not too bad now for me to be able to just play a bit of a stun, almost a stun run through just off the cushion. It's not a pure top spin shot, this one. A fraction of stun on there just to hold the white in the middle of the table. So nicely on this last red now. And now I'm just looking here. I haven't quite got the angle to get nicely on the black. I've got not quite the right angle to screw off the side cushion and up for the blue. So I'm just looking here. If I leave it just a little fraction low on the pink here, that'll just make it easy to just play a run through onto the yellow then. So a slight little stun run through just so that I've got that angle on the pink to run through. So lots of top spin now. Pop the pink, run through nicely for the yellow. So perfectly on the yellow here. Having to stretch just a fraction with just a nice deep screw shot here, not too hard, and leave the green into its own pocket. Landed nicely on this green now, so just a little gentle soft screw to just leave myself the brown in the opposite top corner there. Now I'm nicely on the brown just to screw on and off the side cushion. So another screw shot here. And as you can see, I've fractionally overhit that brown to blue, so I'm slightly the wrong side of the blue. Not enough angle here to go around the table. So just having to play just a gentle little screw and leave more distance between the white and pink than I would have liked. So do your pre-shot routine, just concentrate on potting this pink and the position should take care of itself. So you can just see the white just running past the black, leaving myself a nice black here now. Nothing fancy to do here, and just dropping the black into the pocket. So hopefully this video has given you a bit of an insight now into some of the things that players are thinking when they go about compiling these breaks. So I think one of the key things was that you could see that when I was playing splits into the pack of reds during that break, I was trying to do it when I had reds near the corner pockets. So these reds were acting almost as like reserve reds, so that if I didn't finish on one of the ones in the pack of reds when I went into them, I was pretty much guaranteed to leave myself onto a red into the corner. Now, just a reminder again that I am available for personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions. So for anyone that's interested in that, you can visit my website and the link for that is in the description below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give the video a like. And if you want to see more instructional tutorials just like this one, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Cheers.